England and South Africa. Big game this weekend, folks. Is this the biggest game of the weekend? It might well be. I'm also excited about some of the other games, all of the other games. Uh, France and All Blacks particularly, but rank one against rank three, rematch of the Rugby World Cup final. There's everything to like about this game, folks. I'm going to go through the squads, predictions, stats, uh, recent results, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. Recent results, man, have been pretty evenly split between these two sides, and they are actually recent enough to still kind of be relevant. Uh, three to two is the split and all these games are played in 2018 except for the Rugby World Cup final which was 2019 so kind of quite recent in the scheme of things South Africa got the edge over the last five games winning three of them um, average score across the five games is uh, is 24 points to 20 to South Africa so kind of pretty close there's not much uh, separating these two teams they don't like each other a heck of a lot I think there's been a bit of controversy remember when England won uh, with the old Farrell tackle in 2018, that, that caused a big stir. Um, Eddie was on a huge losing run when he went to South Africa and managed to win that third game to kind of save a bit of face. Uh, in 2018, Rugby World Cup Final 32-12 was pretty convincing in the end. And one of the things about the Rugby World Cup Final was the performance of the front row. And maybe that's going to be a big question in this one. But that being said, I should say that England, they're two from two so far in the autumn. They've got a big win over Tonga, which was to be expected, and then a pretty comfortable win over Australia uh, for South Africa. Tough opponents away from home, but they've still managed to get the job done uh, in both of their games as well. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it just kind of adds to the spice that both these sides are um, also undefeated. Uh, for England, I mentioned the front row. Bevan Rod, Jamie Blamire, and Carl Sinclair is the front row. So Rod is only in his second test after getting his first game last week from memory. And uh, Marla is on the bench. Remember, Marla was a COVID case, was it a week ago or a fortnight ago? But uh, yeah, Bevan Rod's going to be certainly uh, under a wee bit of pressure because South Africa, uh, they took the Scottish and Welsh to town really at the old scrum time. So it's going to be a big area where England will need to front up. And you've got a pretty inexperienced loose head and a pretty inexperienced hooker at least at the international level uh kyle sinkler has been around the blocks for a while so uh there'll be a lot of pressure on him to kind of uh help put the pressure on at scrum time uh itoje and hill uh is the familiar locking duo when i say familiar remember eddie has made a lot of changes to his wider squad like the match their squad is not that different from the one that played last week but uh in terms of the england squad that was playing in 2018 to the england squad here there's certainly a lot of uh, new faces, that's to be sure. Uh, Laws is captain at six because Farrell is out for this one. He's got to have ankle surgery. Uh, Underhill and Curry are your seven and eight. So the under Curry combo continues. Um, yeah, but with Curry at eight. And it's funny because you've got Don Brandt and Simmons on the bench who are two of the best eights in the premiership. So you've got two eights playing, but neither of them starting at number eight. So it's just interesting. Uh, but remember Tom Curry, he's, he looked all right at number eight thus far. I don't think he's been terrible, eh? He's been pretty good. He's good wherever he plays, so kind of good to have him in the lineup. Whatever jersey number's on his back. Youngs and Smith, uh, opposite ends of the experience scale for England, but Smith looked really comfortable last week against Australia, which was pleasing because that was his biggest test in an England jersey thus far. And Youngs, for all the grief that he gets, I still reckon he's looked the business uh, thus far this season as well. Tui Lungi's there at 12. He's moved in from the wing, if you can call it the wing. He had 14 on his back last week, but spent half the game in the midfield. Uh, Slade is there at 13. Marchant comes in uh, on the right wing. He's another guy who tends to pop into the midfield a bit, so you may see those guys chop and change. Um, left wing is Johnny May, so a lot of experience. And then Freddie Stewart is there at 15. He's been a bit of a revelation, man. Like He is so good under the high ball. He's just so tall. Got a good jump on him, got good hands, like what else would you want? And he scored a really good try last week as well, showed some good agility and some good pace. So yeah, with the way the South Africans like to kick you the ball, uh, having a guy who's secure at 15 is going to be very, very important. We saw when the All Blacks played the South Africans, uh, yeah, even Jordy Barrett, who's another guy who's tall and good under the high ball, you know, he missed a few. Um, but the guys around him were just having a, like, uh, not a field day, what's the opposite of field day? A terrible day. There's another word for it, but I can't think of it. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, Stewart's going to have to be good at the back, that's for sure. Uh, Dolly's going to get his first cap for England from the bench as hooker. He likes to score tries from malls. So we'll see if he gets a chance against that big South African pack. Marla, like I mentioned, a bit of experience uh, if he's fully fit back from COVID. And uh, Will Stewart, the front row replacements, Yules, Simmons, and Don Brandt, who I alluded to earlier, and then Quirk and Mellon. So just the two 
uh, just the two uh, back replacements. You've kind of got a couple of loose forwards alongside your lock and then your front row. So obviously I'm going to think the battle up front is going to be a pretty big one. Uh, for South Africa, the squad is fairly stable from what we saw last week. There's no real chopping and changing, just a few jersey numbers have changed. The same front row, uh, Inche Mbunambi and Inyukane, and they... They were turning the screws on the uh, Scottish scrum, man, especially in that first half. I remember Scotland were dominant over Australia. So, yeah, South Africa were just the next level up. Uh, Eben Etzebeth and Lutiaka is the locking duo. Uh, Diaka was on the bench last week. I think it was Mostert's 50th cap someone mentioned to me. So um, that's why he started last week. But Lut uh, is back. And he is very good in the air. And Etzebeth, to be fair, has been in the form of his life at the moment. So... Uh, yeah, look out for him. And uh, as I mentioned, I think in one of the games last week, like he's just been taking that Peter Steph role of shooting out of the line and making guys' lives miserable. Like Russell got slammed uh, at one point during that game last week. So Marcus Smith can expect to meet Eben Beth and get very up close and personal with him very, very soon, uh, I would imagine. Uh, Khaleesi, Quaker Smith, and uh, Dwayne Vermeulen, that's the... Uh, that's the loose trio, and they have been consistent and very good. Interestingly, Vermeulen, who is, um, you know, very, very well regarded, has kind of been maybe the quietest of the three. Kwaka and Khaleesi have been just tearing it up uh, in recent times. Like Khaleesi, uh, with his captaincy, with his carrying, um, his work rate, he's just been everywhere. He's been getting try assists. He's been getting... Uh, you know, through a lot of tackles, so yeah, he's been in uh, great form. Reinach gets a crack at nine alongside Pollard, so those guys are both up from the bench. And to be fair, Reinach added a bit of zip when he came off the bench last week, didn't they? It was all a bit too slow with Herschel, and uh, I don't mind Herschel. I'm quite a, a fan of Herschel, but uh, yeah, when Reinach came on, it, it did look better. And um, yeah, Pollard is generally the favoured guy at ten, isn't he? So um, yeah, he's kind of back to the starting spot. Dalinda and Arm is that. Same midfield, um, so we can expect them to just do what they do because they are uh, always just steady as she goes in recent times, man. Like, Dialenda getting up um, with ball in hand, um, setting up plays and defensive reads. Creel and Mapimpi on the wings, and Mapimpi's the guy who's getting all the credit, but to be fair, defensively, I think Creel's been pretty good. He's been competing well for high balls and uh, making a few good defensive reads, and then you've got LaRue at fullback, who gets a lot of stick, um, from South African fans, that must be said. Um, his kicking could use a few more yards on it, I'll give you that. Uh, his link-up work, link work, I still think, uh, is solid enough. But yeah, when he kicks from the backfield, you could use him to get a few more meters. But that's right, he kicks it deep enough that the teams can't take a quick line-up, that must be said. Uh, Marks, Kitsoff, and Cock, that's that same bomb squad front row, which we're used to see dominating when they come on. Uh, Mostert, like I mentioned, drops to the bench. Visa is there. Hershey Yankees, like I mentioned, Elton Yankees, and Fran Stein. These guys are all on the bench. They're kind of pretty steady as she goes compared to last week. Stats-wise, it's interesting that, like England, like a mall. When you see the stats across the year, England are one of the teams who likes to maul it quite a lot but look who they're up against they're up against South Africa so if there's a team who likes the more maybe even more than England in recent times it is South Africa so that's going to be a fascinating one to watch like I mentioned Nick Dolly the um the replacement hooker for England gets a lot of tries at premiership level at the at the the mall well so does Malcolm Marks and so does Bongi and Bonambi so yeah it's going to be not at the premiership level but international level so it's going to be uh fun to watch that battle uh interestingly South Africa have certainly, in their last two games, absolutely controlled the possession and territory. But then so have England in their two games. Albeit the Tonga one's kind of harder to look at the stats with the same eye because it's just much more of a lopsided game compared to the others, which are all in, in around about the same neighbourhood. So, yeah, which team actually lives with the ball a bit more and which side kind of has to live off the scraps is also going to be interesting. Both sides have got really good line-out numbers. Like, most sides are in the 80s, I think in terms of the overall line-out completion for the year. But both these sides are in the 90s, which is um, just yeah, just that little bit uh, above everybody else. Um, Predictions-wise, England are the favourites with the rugby forecast algorithm by two points, but the box are the favourite with the bookies by like half a point. So it's pretty much at evens with the box as very, very marginal favourites. So... There you go. Uh, it should be a pretty fascinating one. Like I mentioned, the games between these two teams tend to be pretty close. 
England are certainly going to need to get it right up front. I think that is the one biggest area of concern. Like having Farrell out, I don't think is as um, as big a deal as maybe having Genji out. To be honest, I think up against South Africa, you want your best props playing. Uh, for South Africa, it's kind of pretty consistent. And they'll be looking to do the sweep and finish the season on a high. They want to hang on to the Rayburn Shield, which they are holders of, if you don't know about that. Um, type it into Google, Rayburn Shield. South Africa is the holders, and they're defending it in this game. So um, there you go. If you want England rugby gear, England rugby store uh are always having sales on recent times i know there's some sales coming up for black friday or something so check out the link in the description if you want england rugby gear but um yeah you guys let me know your thoughts on how this one's gonna go south africa or england interesting times take care guys i'll talk to you again soon see you later